Welcome to this episode of Learn Kubernetes with Google. My name is Rob Scott, and I'm a software engineer at Google. Today, we're going to be discussing some of the key concepts in the Kubernetes Gateway API. To get started, let's look at a simple example. Acme Store wants to publish a new application with their infrastructure. To accomplish this, people representing three different roles in their organization will be involved. Alice is an infrastructure provider. She's responsible for provisioning new infrastructure for Acme Store. In this case, a Kubernetes cluster. Bob is a cluster operator. He's responsible for managing clusters once they have been provisioned. And finally, Craig is an application developer. He's responsible for configuring how traffic should be routed to his application. As an infrastructure provider, Alice ensures that each cluster she provisions includes a standard set of gateway classes. These resources describe types of load balancing infrastructure that can be provisioned. In this example, we'll be using the standard external LB gateway class that she has defined. As a cluster operator, Bob is responsible for managing gateways in the cluster. He creates a new gateway using the external LB gateway class that Alice has defined. This gateway listens on port 80 and routes traffic with HTTP routes with the gateway label set to Acme external. As the application developer, Craig defines how traffic should be routed to his application. Craig creates an HTTP route that specifies that request to acme.io slash store should be forwarded to his Acme store service. With this route in place, we're all set up to serve traffic for the Acme Store application. At this point, you may be asking why you should use this API. Everything we've already covered is possible with existing APIs. While that's true, Gateway API really thrives with day two operations. It's the more advanced capabilities that make this API so compelling. So let's take a quick look at a few examples of that. Let's say a couple months have passed and Craig is starting to realize just how useful it would be to have Canary rollouts for his app. Fortunately, that's really easy to add with this API. With just a few lines of YAML, he can send 10% of traffic to his new Canary service. Bob has learned about a cool new XLB that is both way more performant and cost effective. He can easily test it out with all the existing routing configuration by creating a new gateway that can run in parallel with the existing one. He doesn't need to recreate the routing configuration and none of the existing routes need to be updated. It just works. Once he determines that the new gateway is working well, he can easily and safely promote it to production. Acme Store has infrastructure across multiple cloud and on-prem environments. Alice wants to provide a consistent experience for cluster users, regardless of where a cluster is located. She can create gateway classes with consistent names in each cluster she provisions. In each environment, she may end up using different vendors to implement the gateway classes, but cluster operators don't need to know or care about that detail. With that introduction, let's take a quick look at how Acme can publish their apps. In this demo, we'll set up a simple gateway in the infra namespace and target routes in the store and inventory namespaces. This allows the store and inventory teams to separately define how traffic should be routed to their applications, all while sharing the same infrastructure. To cross the namespace boundary like this, we require a two-way handshake between routes and gateways. Each have to agree to the connection. First, we'll create a simple gateway. We'll be using Istio for this demo, but there are already many great implementations of this API to choose from. The key detail here is that we're specifying th that the gateway can bind to routes in any namespace. Although we could be more granular here by selecting a subset of namespaces, I'm keeping this example as simple as possible. Next, we'll create an HTTP route for the Acme store that matches requests to acme.io slash store and forwards them to the Acme store service. 
Notice that this route is allowing gateways from any namespace to select the route. There's also a way to be more granular here by selecting a subset of gateways that can use this route, but again, we're trying to keep this example as simple as possible. Finally, we'll create an HTTP route for the inventory application that matches requests to acme.io slash inventory and forwards them to the Acme inventory service. To start, we're going to apply the same YAML manifest we just walked through, first for the gateway and then for the routes. With those in place, we'll make some sample requests to the Istio gateway. You can see we're requesting slash store as the path, and those requests are being routed to Acme store pods in the store namespace. Similarly, if we make the same request, but to the inventory path, you'll see those requests are being routed to Acme inventory pods in the inventory namespace. This is just a really simple way to show how easy it is to route across namespaces with the Gateway API. To learn more about the Kubernetes Gateway API, check out some of the other videos in this series. I'm Rob Scott. Take care.